Amen. Amen. Wait for. No, just can you tell them we're starting? Can you tell Carol and, and Holly we're starting? We'll wait for them. Uh, Alex's not feeling well today, so I wanna uh, we want to pray for him. Um, she didn't contact anybody. I didn't uh, text her. I figured she'd text Phil. She's good about that. Um. Oh. Okay. So we'll pray for Alec, and, and uh, we'd like to pray for uh, Phyllis and Richard this morning, too. We're so thankful to have them today. Would that be all right? I already asked Richard if we could pray for them. So um, let's do that first and foremost. We'll, we'll start with praying for those amongst us, okay? So, um, and then uh, I've got a couple scriptures to share, so... Y'all with me? And I know you're all with Holy Spirit because he's among us and he's good. So I'm going to pray for Alec and then I'm going to go over there and stand and, and we'll pray and anybody that wants to gather. Can we gather around you as a family? Those that will? Okay. I want to pray for them as well. So, Father, we just invite you this morning, Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you're in our midst. We thank you that you are within us, your word says. So we just uh, want to just give you honor and blessing today. God, we just pray for Alec right now. God, he's not feeling well. We just ask that you would uh, bring health and wholeness to his body right now in Jesus' name. So um, for those that want to gather around Phyllis and Richard, uh, we're going to do that. There's a precious couple. They've been with us. From day one, 2007, when we planted the church, and before that, Elaine and Richard and Phyllis would come over for Bible study even before we planted the church. So they're precious, precious, faithful warriors, lovers of Jesus. Father, we thank you for uh, this couple who have carried your torch all these many years. Father, we pray that you would continue to work in them and through them. We pray for health, God, for their bodies, for both of them, strength in Phyllis's body, emotional strength, all that she carries. She carries her family, her, her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her great-great-grandchildren. She carries them in her heart, Father, and you see that. She is standing firm on your word, on your promises of salvation, deliverance, healing to every one of her children, God, of her descendants, of her heritage. Father, we pray for Richard. We pray for Richard. Father, we thank you, God, that he is whole. In Jesus' name, we thank you that you have given him the mind of Christ. We thank you that you've given him power, in his inner man, strength to know your love that's so high, wide, deep, and long. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this couple, this faithful couple. God, bless them. Bless them. Preserve their going in and their going out. In Jesus' name. I speak healing over your ears in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is healing ears this morning. I say, open now in Jesus' name. Life, life, life. I command the ears to open now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus heals you, Brother Richard, in Jesus' name. And anybody else who's having ear problems, the Lord is healing. Especially somebody's left ear. I just speak healing. And I say the Lord has healed you. Take your healing in Jesus' name. Ears open in the name of Jesus. Deafness, go. Deafness, go. Go. Ooh. In Jesus' name.
So I just want to break weariness right now. Lord said, there's some, I just feel the heaviness. There's people just walking in some weariness and heaviness. And I just take authority over that weariness and that heaviness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, go. Release God's people right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I want to thank you. You are present today to heal. You are present to heal. And you just reach up. Everyone, anyone who has walked in some weariness and heaviness and just say, get out in Jesus' name. Don't receive it. It's not yours. And Lord, I thank you for bringing a refreshing, a refreshing over each and every one of your people here today. I thank you, Lord. Even now, woo, I thank you, Jesus. Weariness gone, heaviness gone. Your life, your light, your energy, your strength power and glory come upon you people now. In Jesus name, Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. No more. Nahum says it will not return again. I say it will not return again. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let's just take a moment and just give him praise. Just, just let it flow out of your heart. Let's pray in the spirit. Let's bless his holy name. Let's give him praise. Let's honor him. Let's glorify his name. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for refreshing. Thank you for refreshing us, God. Thank you for filling us, God. Thank you for filling us, God, by your Holy Spirit. God, we receive it in Jesus' name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience with us, God. We thank you. We thank you for that refreshing, God, in Jesus' name. We take your yoke upon us for your burden is easy. We thank you, Father. we enter into worship. I'm going to read Psalm 63. Psalm 63 says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. 
when we were praying this morning, uh, I just felt, which I feel often, just the longing of the Lord. The bride, which you are all, the bride will experience the longing for Jesus. We're longing for his return. If you don't feel his longing physically in your inner being, you will. Because it's, the, it's what Holy Spirit does. He puts a longing in us for the bridegroom. We are his bride waiting for the bridegroom to come to return and he's coming for us so we long for him in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water this is what revelation 22 says revelation 22 first of all i'm going to start i'm just going to read two verses in verse 16 this is what jesus says i jesus have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And then John goes on to say in verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears, and we're gonna talk about hearing a little later on this morning, hearing, let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Let Holy Spirit work that in you, that longing for your bridegroom. This is how we hasten the day of his coming. We long for him. We say, come, Lord Jesus, and everything in between will do. Evangelism, signs, miracles, wonders. But the core issue of why we long for him, because he is our first love. He is central to everything we do. Jesus told us the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as we love him, we begin to long more and more every day. That longing grows for our bridegroom to come. And the bride and the spirit say, come. Oh, 
chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And there's an
around you, chains around you. There are demons attacking you and your families, your neighbors. So I want us this morning right now, I want to say enough is enough. And let's take authority over the enemy right now. Over your household, over your family's household, your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, and your neighbors, our community right now. And even some in here, I really believe there's some demons that are keeping you down and it's time to say enough is enough. Today is your day. 
to be free from the oppression of the enemy. Now is the day of salvation. So, Father, in the name of just take right now, you, if whatever came to your mind and your heart that you know, and I'm not trying to make something up in your life, something you know that the enemy's been oppressing you in, whether it's an infirmity, a sickness, or a mind battle you've been going through, whatever it is, maybe it's finances. God wants to release finances to some here in a wave that they've never seen before for his kingdom and his glory and his honor. Whether it's your children, your grandchildren, whatever it is right now, just take authority over the enemy right now and bind the power of the enemy. Whatsoever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. And it's been bound in heaven now, so let's bind it here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ now, we take authority and we stand against all the powers of the enemy. You gave us authority, Lord, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And you said nothing shall by any means hurt us. So now we just put off now Satan and his demons in Jesus' name. All the powers of darkness that are coming against us and attacking us. Today is the day. Right now we break the yoke over us now in Jesus' name. Right now just break the yoke over your family, over yourselves right now. Just receive the authority that God has given you through the name of Jesus Christ. Depression, go in the name of Jesus. Suicide, go in the name of Jesus. Gender confusion, go in the name of Jesus, right now. Hopelessness, go in the name of Jesus Christ. We are who you say that we are. We are children of God. Just, I want you to say that right now. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. One more time. I am a child of God. Amen. Sing that chorus again. Thank you.
this and what Pastor Gary just said. The Lord told me this morning, I was waiting for the right time to say it if he wanted me to say it. I want to tell you this year is your year of freedom. The devil has lied to you. He's told you. You've listened to different people, social media, news, whatever it is you listen to. Uh, they have all they got is bad news, bad news, bad news. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, this is your year of freedom. Do not believe that. This whole service is set up. You can't make this stuff up. Break every chain. Every chain is broken. All you have to do is say those chains are broken. I don't receive bondage. I don't receive depression. I don't receive it because my God said. And then you tell the devil and remind him what your God said. I am free. This is my year of freedom in every area of my life. So whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So as she sings this song, Break Every Chain, you see every chain broken, as Pastor Gary said, because this is your year, I'm telling you, of freedom in Jesus' name. sung about and and spoke about God told me that there is power in the testimony and uh, you know there's a place in the Bible where he said but what do you who do you say that I am who is Jesus to you you know and and there's just so many descriptions of our Lord and Savior that's so beautiful our Redeemer you know he says let the redeemed of the Lord say so and there's a reason he wants our mouthpiece to be in operation for the right you know but because the troubling thoughts will come but we don't have to take them you know so I just say I'm the redeemed of the Lord and I say so and I say that about all of my brothers and sisters in the Lord, my natural sister and sisters, my son, my family, but my church family. So much closer at times, you know. But Jesus, he can do, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. And I take that strength today, you know. Every day, I'm claiming more and more. I'm going to get greedy. <laughs> anyway, I love you, and I love the Lord with all my heart. God bless you all. God bless you all. China shop. 
Tear it all up. God's so good. I've been reading the Gospels again. It's so good to be. Jesus is central. Bobby Connor's been saying centricity of Christ, and it's just like so true. We need to put him at the forefront. Jesus' image does that so well in Orlando. Jesus said in John 3, uh, let's see, was it John 3 or John 4? talked about the harvest it's white I had it marked yeah that was John 3 but anyway he said don't say there's four months to the harvest he says look right now the fields are ripe they're white they're ripe they're ready to be reaped right now our our young generation is ready to be harvested and there'll be a a lot of other people come along with that a lot of parents I believe and so I believe the Lord just really wanted to stir us to the fact that he's preparing us to use us in a mighty way I had a message again ready to minister today but it's not I don't think it's the time but on the on the fruit I mentioned this before on the fruit not of the spirit but the fruit of the move of God the fruit of power signs and wonders but it has to be accompanied with love. It has to be accompanied by hearing his voice and intimacy. And there's a book by Randy Clark called um, Miracles Through Intimacy. Um, Healing Through Intimacy, that's what it's called. And there's a subtitle on it. I'm going to recommend everybody to get it here. I'll, I'll bring it next Sunday and show you it. But there has to be a, a John 15 relationship, you know, through 17. There has to be an abiding in him and a and him and abiding in us, you know, amen, for us to go out, amen. So I'm probably preaching Diana's little message already, it sounds like it. So I'm going to back off here. I'm going to back off, you know. So, you know, yeah, I was just thinking, you know how when a couple's engaged, they wait for the wedding day. The bride is ready to give herself to the man, the groom, and the groom is ready to, to give himself to the bride. And then that day comes. And I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. There's, a, there's an outpouring of God coming like we've never seen before. And, it, and it's up to us whether we want to partake in that or not. I want, I want it all. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with being exciting and looking forward to that. Amen. But at the same time, we have to be sober enough to realize that we, we have to do some things for this. It doesn't just automatically happen. It's not like your irrigation system that just automatically comes on. We have to actually go out there and put in the effort, the labor, the prayer. And God's been speaking about evangelism to us. I believe the time is coming soon. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to keep talking about it because it's coming. And preparation time is now. Amen. Yesterday, um, I was at the Huddle House doing a, a class, and there's a young man there that cooks, and I've been talking to him a little bit every time I have a class. Not about the Lord, just being good, being a friend to this young man. And um, yesterday, he came walking in, and he goes, "Hey, you're here." looking right at me <laughs> so he came walking up to me and he said how are you and I said well I'm good I said what about you he said I'm pretty good I'm pretty good young man and he says um I said that you're you're not working you're not in your uniform he goes no he said I'm here early I like being early I said well, that's great and I said well what are you doing right now? He said, nothing. I said, oh, good. You're going to sit with me. So I took his, I said, give me your hand. And he said, okay. Gave me his hand. 
sat down and God let me lead him to the Lord within a couple of minutes. He was ready. He was already ready. And you know, I hadn't even really spoken to him about the Lord before this, but he was completely open. And I said, well, would you like to give your heart to the Lord today? And he said, yes, I would. And I led him to the Lord. He got up. He gave me a huge hug. He started walking away, turned around, came back, sat back down again. Just didn't get quite enough. <laughs> and so we talked for about 10 minutes, and then he went off to help the other guys in the restaurant. But, you know, that's how ready the harvest is. It used to be that I would spend oodles of time trying to, uh, oodles, I don't know if that's a good word, but anyway, I used to spend a lot of time trying to get people to have a, a relationship, because that's how you build it, you build it as a relationship and be a friend to somebody, and from there you can eventually, hopefully, lead them to the Lord, but, and that's not all, the only reason I make friends, okay, but it's part of it, and, and so, I mean, it just, it just happened so easily. And I said, Lord, you're so awesome because it's going to be so much easier now. We think it's going to be harder. It's not going to be harder because God has been pouring into their souls even when we're not around because we're not it. We might get to lead them and get that accomplished, but it's not us. It's always the Lord. And all of the credit and everything belongs to him. All the glory goes to him. Another part of that scripture is Jesus said, many have sowed already in it and, and watered, and it's time to reap the harvest because our country is so ripe. These kids are so confused. They've been shut down, put down. They've been told they're either abusers or they're oppressed, and there's no hope, you know. They're, they're, yeah, and they're just part of the common people, and they're owned by the government you know if that's the crt and all the other things that are going out now to our kids so i think it's coming fast it's coming fast um uh, so did you want to share a couple words what i wanted to share was all of you as a congregation do you realize how much power and authority you have in the lord as a congregation here corporately when we pray do you know how many people get healed or have answers to prayers? It's phenomenal. I've been in, let's see, I've been with the Lord 40 years, and I've been in two other congregations where I could say that, and this is the third one. So they're far and in between where you have corporate prayer that's that powerful. Uh, I know personally when you have prayed for me, one time I was healed instantly, and two other times hours later. I was healed. And if you just think about when we open up here in the coffee house, we're corporate. Yes, sir. And we have the power and the authority. And God's been flowing through us, and he's just been anointing us so much here. Yes. And I just can't imagine what he's going to do. Even when the people come in, even if you're not in here, you're at home, or you are here, we're still corporate. And I just expect to see great things once we open up. I sure enjoyed baby time. <laughs> Good morning. If you could prepare yourselves to give. Remember to mark a tither offering on your checks or envelopes or coffee house or missions. Well, it's impossible not to get stirred up when you come here, isn't it? Stirred up for what God's going to be doing with us. And that gives us purpose, hope, and a destiny. And how dare we wake up and think, oh, Lord, what am I going to do today? Because he's got plans for us. You just say yes. Lord, you have plans for me today, plans for my welfare, to give me a future and a hope. And that goes for our children as well. And like Mary and 
Gary said this morning, a lot of us have been attacked by things happening to our children, our family, ourselves. And we say, no, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He has given us the spirit of life within us. And we can conquer with him. This is a scripture I wanted to share with you this morning. The head says divine sonship or daughtership. Actually, son means both. Look with wonder at the depth of the Father's marvelous love that he has lavished on us. This is 1 John 3. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is that they didn't recognize him. Beloved, we are God's children right now. However, it is not yet apparent what we will become. But we do know that when it is finally made visible, we will be just like him. For we will see him as he truly is, and all who focus their hope on him will always be purifying themselves just as Jesus is pure. And that is our remedy, that's our prescription, that's our hope. Now how can you keep your eyes on him when you can't see him? You know, I close my eyes in prayer and it's dark in there. We see him in his word. We see him in our hearts. We feel him in our hearts. Other than that, when we get to see him, we're going to be like him. And every day I say, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. And when you say that, it's not like come right now and let everything fall as it may. He's preparing. We can say, come, Lord Jesus, and know that he is prepared. He is prepared for what's going to happen and what's going to be and getting our families ready. He's got it all in his hands. So we will hope with an expectation of wondrous blessing and glory. Thank you, our precious Lord. And I would say to you guys this week, ask Jesus to be so real to you that you just fall in love. Fall in love. It says he's our first love. And I, I would guarantee some of you have fallen in love before, maybe had a playground crush or, you know, mama's boy, daddy's girl, whatever. But this is the real pure love, the pure love that goes beyond all of that. And we know that can be powerful. So how much more powerful would it be to know his love perfectly and to just be all up in his love? How glorious that would be and will be. We seek it and want it. And I want it. So, Lord, we thank you for your precious, perfect love. Your perfect love that supersedes any other kind of love in this world, which are all wonderful, but you are the most wonderful. Fill us with desire for you and you only. And you will fulfill every other desire that we have because the human heart desires love above all things. But love in this world is not perfect, but yours is. Yours is perfect. And we do desire that, Lord. Help us to walk with you, to look to you, and to be changed from glory to glory. Thank you for blessing all that our hands touch because you have put our hands to the plow and we will not look back but we will strive forward pressing onward and upward and not looking behind to the things that the enemy would slap us with no no we look forward to you Jesus and all of your plans we want to be a part we want to walk with you arm in arm let your heaven be on this earth, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
<laughs> yeah, we asked Diana to share this morning, so yeah. it's going to be a treat. And I will keep yeah. it very short or try to because of time. No. Whatever okay. the Lord leads. Okay. We're not, we've never been that way. All right. But All right. the roast won't burn. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hold it. Okay. So. I just want to say I'm glad to be here, and I feel like most of what I was going to share has already been shared, so God is so amazingly good. It's the same spirit that talks to all of us. It's just so confirming and so wonderful. That song, Defender, has been my heart's cry for so long since I first heard it, because that's what he's done in my life. He has picked up all the pieces. He has put me back together again. He has been the great defender of my heart. But anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit of my testimony. And I'm using a chair because I've been being attacked in my physical body since the beginning of the year. So I'm going to stand against that too. But anyway, so I wanted to talk a little bit about my testimony, but I also wanted to mostly talk about being a daughter because, or a son, whichever applies to you. But um, that's been a, a process for me. And I just wanted to share, because um, the two commandments that Jesus left us was to love him with everything that we are and to love others as we love ourselves. Well, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know, I didn't even really know it was a thing for a long time. But um, God has been picking up my pieces and healing me. And there's maybe another level or two of PTSD he needs to peel off me. You know, no one's arrived yet. Uh, we're all in the process somewhere. But I just want to say as a disclaimer before I start giving my testimony, that God has blessed me to be able to have complete forgiveness, healing, and restoration, and all the trauma and pain in my life all any of those that participated so I just want to put that out there I love them all and have prayed God's blessing for them so uh, mm, he's so good and I just wanted to open with a couple of scriptures to give some background and context for what I was going to share and the first one would be James 4 8 which is draw near to God and he will draw near to you when I think when you're raised the way I was, um, I was just it was just a, a stack of lies. Everything was lies. I didn't know the truth. So I'm gonna give a lot of scriptures because since God has set me free from so much and delivered me so much, I I have to use His Word as my anchor, my guidepost because I know it's true. I know there's so many lies out there. But I know his word is true. So that's why I wanted to preface all this with that. And also, and what led me into this was the scripture I read years ago in Matthew 6.15. If you forgive others, they'll forgive you. God will forgive you. But if you don't, then he can't. So I knew in my heart I had to find a way to forgive people that had hurt me. So... I think my adventure with God started out when I was four. <laughs> I was not raised in a Christian home, never heard about Jesus. I had Catholic neighbors. I was raised in South St. Louis mostly when I was young, and I just never really heard about him. On Easter, I would hear the neighbors talk about him. But um, I don't know what really possessed me one day, but I, at four, left our home. I'm trying to make this kid-friendly in case some children watch. But um, I left my grandma's house where I was staying, which was like in the middle of the block, and I went up the street, across the street, and there was a Presbyterian church on the right. I had always seen it because I used to walk to the grocery store with my grandma a lot, and we had to pass it on the way. And so I had always seen the pretty stained glass and you know, was just attracted to the building, but I wasn't sure why. So I had, it was also on the way everybody we took to go to school. But this day, I don't know even how I got out of the house by myself. I don't know any of it, other than I found myself at the church. 
and I had knocked on the front door and tried to get in, and they wouldn't let me in. They said um, they were sorry, but you can't come in without a parent. So I was really sad, and I heard singing. So I was right around the steps, and there was a basement window with stained glass, and they had it propped open. And there were kids in there, and someone playing the piano, and they were playing Jesus Loves the Little Children. So I sat there and listened, and I had my first revelation <laughs> because I realized all my children, and God loves me. Jesus loves me. So that was a foundation for me that I needed to anchor me in all that I would be able to have to face in my life, which was very difficult, very difficult, very difficult things God delivered me through and from. But anyway, I'm not going to, that's the highlight I wanted to say so you would know where I'm coming from. Okay. And I also wanted to do a scripture from Psalm 73. And I wanted to do 27 and 28 in the Amplified. And it is, bef be bleh, be I used to stutter a lot too, so God has really delivered me. <laughs> For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You will destroy all who are false to you. And in the Amplified, it as uh, quotations of spiritual harlots will depart from you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God and made him my refuge that I may tell of all of your works. And also, I guess I need to look up First Peter 4.8. So if you guys will just show me some grace, I'm going to come find my favorite Bible today. So I'm going to do this. And that was First Peter. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, I think I'm here now, but thank you. I think I am. But in the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And about all things, have a fervent love for one another. Love will cover a multitude of sins. Because when I was a teenager, I'm just going to skip through some things. God had impressed on me that I was born to love. And I would just question him all the time. How could that be? How could that be true, Father? Father? I don't know any nice people. I don't know anyone. I try to love them, but I don't really know any nice people. And so he kept trying to teach me that I was born to love. And he was going to continue to teach me until I learned. <laughs> anyway, and so um, hmm. also we're going to go to I don't what I don't ever want to be like, which is going to be in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. You're going to put that on the board, too? <laughs> Maybe over here. I got it. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. Okay, this is something that, this. Is, I mean, I have a real fear of the Lord, in case you guys don't know that. <laughs> because I know the devil. I know him quite well. <laughs> and he knows me. So I definitely have a fear of the Lord. So this is what I never want Jesus to think about me. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and in vain they worship me and teach doctrines and commandments of men, which makes God's word void and ineffective. So I just want to know the truth, his truth. Okay, and then, um, hmm, sorry. All right. I'm not going to go to that reference, too, as in Isaiah. So in Hebrews 4.16, he says, Let us therefore boldly come to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. That scripture has saved my life many times. Just to know that I could do that. Because sometimes, I, I still don't know a lot of Christians other than here. So sometimes in the world... I might not know something. I, I know that. I know I can boldly go to his throne of grace, but I feel like I'm under attack or I have a question or I have a problem. I have the confidence in him that I can do that. And then I also just want to go over a couple of scriptures of who, what, 
what power and authority we have as sons or daughters of his, which is in Luke 10, 19. Let's see. Okay. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we have that power and authority when we feel an attack of the enemy or on our family or our friends or we know someone that is being attacked. We, as sons and daughters, have the right and the authority to activate that in our lives and through our mouths. He is drawing us to do just that. And also in um, Romans 8, 14, Another thing about being a son or a daughter, for all those who are led by the Spirit are called sons of God. And Galatians 3.26, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through Christ and through the faith. So, okay. So I think really what God has been drawing us into, me especially, is I've noticed so I can process the things he's trying to get me to be healed of is that as I was raised like that, and anybody that is, and the whole world is full of people that have been raised like that, they develop these strongholds and these um, wrong mindsets, and they don't realize who they are as a son or a daughter, because in their mind, they have this warped perception of what it means to be a son or a daughter. You know, so you don't realize you can actually go to your heavenly father because maybe you can go to your earthly father. You know, so those things God wants us to uh, unlearn that we've learned in the world and be healed from so that he, because he is calling us to rise into who he has created us. This whole last year, he has been teaching me about who I am so that I can be what I want to be for him, which is just a branch. John 15, John 15, 5. I just want to be a branch. I want him to use me as a branch because I can't do anything without him if I'm not connected to him. He's the vine. I'm the branch. I just want him to be able to use me, get everything off of me, go through the eye of the needle, everything offloaded, and I can explain that later for anybody who doesn't know what that means, um, to be able to have effectual prayers, and there we are, fervent, for uh, him to be able to use me whenever, however, with whomever he chooses. So he is developing that in all of us. And in order to be able to have that fruit, and you know how you see a fruit is when you squeeze the fruit, you see what really comes out, right? So sometimes the pressures in life, well, you know, we get squeezed. We don't always have goodness or patience. So we, he's developing that in all of us, the fruit of the Spirit, so that we can carry the gifts of the Spirit because the greater things are coming. The greater things are coming. He is trying to prepare the bride, trying to prepare his sons and daughters. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful that he is healing all of us. And it's just for such a time as this. That's why we're here. And I don't know. I think that might be about it for today. Let me make sure. Um, I had a brief history there. Oh, and just another positive thing that God has shown me. Because his blood is sufficient. And his word is, oh, sorry, Jeremiah 23, 29, sorry. His word is like fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. The rock of lies. The rock of lies that some of our, our, our foundations were built upon. His word is breaking those all to pieces and creating in us a foundation of his love, his word, his truth, so that we can stand in these days coming. Because, you know, you can only be as strong and stand as high depending on how secure your foundation is. So he is just really wanting to offload all of the baggage. And I'll briefly go over that real quick, 
is, okay, the eye of the needle, I mean, it's been a topic by intellectuals for generations and generations because of the scripture and the Bible. You know, it's easier for you know, a rich man to pass with the eye of the needle than to get to heaven. But what they don't realize is the eye of the needle is actually a physical place. It was actually a physical place in, I believe, Jerusalem, uh, somewhere in the Middle East. I think that's where. Um, okay. But um, what it is was during trade, uh, there was a route, and it was called the Eye of the Needle. And the camel, before they could travel through there, had to offload all their baggage, all of it, get clean, everything, so that they could get down and tunnel through and come up the other side. And then they would reload them with whatever they needed to go. So that's kind of what God's doing with us, I think. He's offloading all of our baggage. He is, he is all those places. So he had reminded me once I was acting like a trash compactor. And I'm like, oh, that does not sound good, God. Okay. So he had shown me I was a stuffer. <laughs> Anytime I had emotional issues or pain or trauma, I would just stuff it because, you know, I'm too tough. Nothing's going to bother me. You know, I'm a South Sider, you know. What's going to bother me, right? So I would stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. And just think I was just totally a, I'm not going to use that word, <laughs> tough person. But anyway, yeah, he showed me that it was going to explode if I didn't start taking the things out and dealing with them. So Holy Spirit is such a gentleman and so kind and so loving and he has just sat with me so many times when I was sad and just helped me empty my trash compactor. <laughs> you know, just take out one thing, look at it, see what I need to do, who do I need to forgive, what do I need healed. <sighs> Father, help me. And he's such a gentleman. He always shows up. He always helps. He always guides you to the right things to say, the right things to do. And I just, when I have a hard time, and some things have been really hard to forgive, I just ask him, and I just take it and lay it at his feet. And I can feel his love come over me and just wash me clean. And then I'm able to pray for that person, and I call back any pieces of me that may have been there and remain, and break all soul ties if there were any and just to receive his complete restoration and pour his healing balm of Gilead in all those painful places. So he is just so faithful and true to do that. And I know we all have our version of a trash compactor. <laughs> so it's not just me. But anyway, I'm just very thankful for his word, thankful for the process. And, oh, I didn't even get to touch on my mental health issues, but it's getting late, so. <laughs> oh, okay. So, all right, let me see. That's a real issue today, I know. So many people suffer with mental health issues. I have, I have been hospitalized for anxiety, depression disorder. I was on medication for years for it. Um, I, I let the world get to me, you know. I actually spent a year in a uh, home, a uh, residential care facility, because I had sought help, <laughs> and they locked me down. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, God used that process for sure. <laughs> Witness to a lot of people in the home. But he also used it to, um, he's, the whole time he's just been showing me who I am. And I just, it, before I ended up in the home, I just really didn't even want to be here anymore. I had had a, um, I would say, a nervous breakdown type thing. But I actually overdosed on my prescription medication, which many, many women are, and men are on right now because doctors just keep giving us more and more pills, cover more and more things, and then this pill fixes that, what that pill did, and blah. Thankful God set me free from all of it in one day. Hallelujah. No side effects, no withdrawals. A decade of Valium, fentanyl, hydrocodone, blah, blah, blah. A suitcase worth. One day, no side effects. He's, he's so faithful and so amazing. 
And all of this is just part of the process. And I'm not anyone special. If he would do that for me, I know we'll do it for any of his children. He loves us all. We're all the apple of his eye. We're all cherished. We're all his special one, each one of us. You know, maybe, maybe you didn't grow up. I didn't grow up ever knowing anything about being special. I mean, I, I, was, always, I was very dyslexic, and I transposed math numbers, and I was always a hyper, and I always had to sit at the front of the class. I think that's why I sit in front now, so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> Because <laughs> I always had to sit by the teacher's desk, <laughs> or in the hall, or at the principal's office. <laughs> yeah, something was always happening. So, anyway. Yeah. But even then, he spoke to me. But there was so much of the testimony I could share, for sure. Even then, at that tender age, I was just remembering in first grade was the first time I'd ever written a song, and it happened to be about pintos and paints, horses. And now he has actually blessed me with the three. <laughs> so that just goes to show you, he does care about everything we care about. I had already had a conversation with him that said, Father, if I have to wait till I get to heaven again to have horses again, that, that's fine. I'm good with that. Yet... Because I did something I didn't want to do one day and went and did something for somebody else. He blessed me with horses. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't base things, all that just to say, don't base things on how you feel one day if God asks you to do something. <laughs> take a moment, take a breath, pray about it, and do it. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Nike doesn't own that logo. <laughs> no, we need to just do it. Just do it. Don't just, you know, sometimes we get stuck in the um, analysis paralysis, right? Should we or shouldn't we? Should we or shouldn't we? So, mm, yeah. Father has helped me to completely forgive everyone. I'm so thankful. And then, um, both sedated. I'm okay. Hang on a second. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to find my place a little bit. I already talked about that. Had to go spend a year in a home. That was so fun. Actually, my son was in the military then, so and my daughter was a teenager, senior in high school. Oh, but uh, yeah, so I was literally so drugged up then I was walking into walls when my son got out of the military. Him and my daughter-in-law came and got me. I had my year was up, <laughs> so they let my son and daughter-in-law sign me out. And I have been living with one of my family members since then. That was in 2010. But this past year, God has blessed me with my own space. I'm still working on it, but I'm still on the property of my son, but it, I have my own space. So I'm very thankful about that. And let's see. Oh, Philippians 4, 7, peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace literally comes if I feel any, like, flashbacks of trauma. All I have to do is go to him. And he, he is just, I just, my, my theme through this whole thing of him making us sons and daughters is when we trust him, he's so faithful. He will never just leave you hanging out there. He really won't. He really won't. It's just the first step sometimes can be the hardest. And um, he is preparing us, like I said, for the greater things. Walking in the nines. And is it okay? I just want to read that one poem, and then I want to do a blessing real quick from uh, Deuteronomy 28. I want to read this uh, one poem. Holy Spirit, through all this, um, because, I mean, I was all closed up. And I started out kind of writing short stories. Sorry, the mic movement. Um, the first one I ever wrote was a safe place, because that's what I needed, a safe place. <laughs> and everybody needs a safe place where they feel like they can unpack their whatever it is. But um, all that to say again, that uh, Holy Spirit has help me realize what my feelings even are sometimes through writing poetry. And I'll go back and read it. And he's like teaching me lessons even though I'm writing it. So it's just so amazing. But I wanted to share this, one of the most current poems I have with you guys. And then I just want to do a blessing of Deuteronomy 28 over you, 1 through 14. But here's this. I will try to go slow. I tend to mumble and talk too fast. So I'm going to try <laughs> Okay, and this is called A Daughter. Although a son, 
could work as well because I'm just a girl, so I said a daughter. All right, no confusion. <laughs> My mouth will create fire throughout the house, God's house. I am God's house. My mouth will create fire when I speak God's desire. We are going up higher, a world to inspire. So much will transpire, nines for attire. My father's house in me, given eyes to see. I fully believe all his love I receive. No remnant of doubt, only a joyous shout. The love of Jesus is what it's all about. Out of the caves and onto the water, I am his loving daughter. Here we go, nothing about this season is slow. Thinking, oh, at last, yet happening so fast. Focusing your eyes and uncovering of all lies, hidden behind a disguise, no more alibis. Looky there, surprise, surprise. Justice is here, loud and clear. As sheep led to the slaughter, your loving daughter. Thank you, Father. I give you the glory. That is the story. We give you the glory. And I just want to read this prayer blessing because this is our right as sons and daughters of God. This blessing I'm about to read, Deuteronomy 28. Let me get there. Yes, sir. 28, 28, come on. Okay. And I'm going to stay in the New King James right now. <clears throat> So now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the, earth, the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's a promise. That is a direct promise. Promise. Here we go. This is our promise. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be, ah, sorry, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds. Hear that? <laughs> the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall you your basket be and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's a promise. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse and in all to which you set your hand. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. That's a promise. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasures, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations but not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so shall you not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Or the last half of that chapter will be for you. Isn't that? 
which is the curses on disobedience. If anybody wants to go read that. But I'm not going to go there right now. No, no, they don't belong to me, so I'm not going to read them. If anybody wants to read them, they're welcome to go do that. So anyway, I just want to say thank you for letting me share part of my story. And yeah, yeah, it's a long testimony, but that's some highlights. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Her horse is on my property. Anyway, they're so beautiful. The horses are, her horses are on my property. I just want to say their names. Their name is Liberty. Yes, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's and, how I got her. <laughs> and Charlene and um, Charlie. Charlie. And they are so friendly and sweet. Anyway, they're my greeters. They actually, people who drive up into my gra driveway, they run up to the fence and they'll greet you. <laughs> They are definitely looking for a snack. <laughs> they like the apples and carrots. Yeah, and, and Kenny, my son Kenneth, yeah. is the one that feeds them, and they love Kenny, yeah. and Kenny loves the horsies. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, That's another <laughs> yes, anyway, I'm known as the cat lady because I rescued a lot of cats. And anyway, I love animals, but whenever... Somebody can't remember your name. I say, you know, the horse lady. <laughs> so you're known as the horse lady. <laughs> I know I used to have horses, and, uh, and I know you have horses now. But there's one thing I learned a long time ago. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him swim on his back. Yeah, I've heard that one before. God gave me a word about that. You can land, learn, bleh, I can't talk, but you can lead a man to knowledge, but you can't make him think either. Just like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can't make somebody think, but you can lead him there. So it's, God, it's Holy Spirit's job to do the rest of that. <laughs> Ooh, you've been given a boatload. So, Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for body ministry. We thank you for all the promises and the words that were spoken. Father, I ask that every seed that was planted in our heart of your word, God, would not remain unfruitful, but would bear some 30, 50, 60, and 100 fold. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's your math.